For the first time in this young season, the Kings get blown out 104 to 122 by the Celtics in Boston. They stayed competitive until late in the third quarter, and then from there, Boston went on a huge run and took over this game pretty comfortably. The Celtics took an early lead in this game. They had a good first quarter hitting the three ball while the Kings really could not at all. The Kings played good defense at the start, but then kind of gave it up as the first quarter went on. I thought that Harrison Barnes and Kevin Herter did a good job of keeping Jason Tatum quiet early, but that did not uh, did not happen for the rest of the game. Jason Tatum ended with 30 points. Keegan Murray still just cannot hit a shot. He is getting open looks, and it feels like every single one of his shots is just down and then out. And to his credit, he's still shooting. But these last few games, especially, have just been very rough. And kind of the opposite of Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes continues to play well. He was aggressive early in this game, uh, getting to the rim and carrying the Kings offense early on until Sabonis and Fox got into it. It was definitely a rough first quarter Jason Tatum wasn't really doing too much, but Jalen Brown was um, doing all of the attacking for them. He was playing bully ball on Herder a few times and some other guys and just really getting to the rim well. And along with that, the other Celtics were getting open threes and not missing. Al Horford didn't miss a three in this game. And a lot of the other guys like Derek White and Malcolm Brogdon and a few other guys for them shot really well from three and they're a really good team so they're going to get open looks and I thought that their defense was very active they are definitely a smaller team at least right now with Robert Williams out and the Kings were were taking advantage of that Sabonis was dominating inside for a lot of this game and He wasn't always getting the stats to back that up, but he would seal his guy in the paint and then another king would make a drive and get an easy layup because the help couldn't come because Sabonis had him sealed inside. So I thought the Kings did a really good job of doing that, but they also just couldn't hit shots. And then at a certain point, the Celtics in that third quarter when they went on the run really stopped any drives from happening. The Kings just could not get into the paint. An interesting thing that we saw early in this game was uh, Casey Akpala getting minutes over Trey Lyles. Casey Akpala had 21 minutes in this game, and he's someone that, he's the type of player that we need, physically, I guess, at least. Um, he, we need his defensive presence off the bench, his length. I thought he was really good defensively against Tatum and others. He just gives the bench so much more length, shot blocking, and like disruption defensively. The problem before, you know, has been on the offensive end with him, but he was solid. He hit one of two threes, and he was driving the ball hard and got a dunk, and he ended with seven points, which is definitely, you know, enough for him to justify being out there, and I think he definitely earned himself another look in the next game against Phoenix. Trey Lyles has not been shooting the ball that well as of late, and that's really what we need him for. And if he's not doing that, then you might as well have Casey Paula out there defensively. I think Trey Lyles was a good guy to go to early in the season when the bench offense was struggling. And maybe now that the rotations are more set and that Everyone kind of knows what they're doing more, I guess, on offense, on the bench. Maybe Casey Akpala will permanently replace Trey Lyles in the rotation, and I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to that just because of how bad the defense has been for that second unit. And especially if Davion Mitchell keeps playing the way offensively that he did in this game, I thought he was really good attacking the rim. Uh, he he's just so quick and 
once he gets that first step on a guy, he's pretty unstoppable. You're not going to get back in front of him. And your only hope is to block his shot because he is smaller. But he's really quick, so it is hard to it can be hard to block his shot if he gets by you and the help doesn't come quick enough. Kevin Herter's shot was not really falling this game. He was 0 for 6 from 3, and he only had 7 points. But, uh, you know, he he definitely wasn't getting bad looks, but he wasn't wide open on, on any looks, really. And so the Celtics, you know, they did a, they did a good job of, of disrupting him. And then in the third quarter, the Kings did take a lead, but... I thought they were playing really well defensively at the start of the third quarter, but then Jason Tatum would, was just hitting shots, difficult shots. I mean, he is, I mean, he's an MVP candidate. He's one of the top players in the league right now, and he showed why in that third quarter. And one thing that I noticed in this game was something, was a trend that we've been seeing all season, but it, it, it happened a lot in this game. Because the Celtics defense is good, so they were forcing us into late shot clock shots a lot. And most of the time, those late shot clock shots are Fox threes. And he hit three of them. Three kind of not open, you know, pretty contested uh, late threes. And he's, he's pretty good at hitting those because his shot is just so much better. And he's looked good at the free throw line. And I think he's getting the respect of other players for his three-point shot. He got fouled by Marcus Smart contesting one of his threes. And I think that's a big sign of guys respecting his shot, that Marcus Smart has to get out there and contest his shot. And he ended up fouling him, getting a a flagrant, I think it was. And Fox knocked down the, the free throws. And his shot just looked so smooth. And he was swishing every shot you know he only shot three for nine from three in this game and six for 17 overall he did not have a good game but I thought that that it was a lot of the the defense from the Celtics forcing that and the the team defense forcing Fox to have to create for himself latent shot clocks and taking bad shots in this game then late in that third and early in the fourth the Celtics Went on a 19-0 run to take a take a big lead and never looked back. And I think a large part of that was Jason Tatum j- drawing so much attention. He didn't score, you know, a, a lot on that run, but he was creating for others a lot and getting open threes for guys. And the Celtics just weren't missing with guys like Derek White and and I don't remember who it was, but someone banked in a three at one point. They just couldn't really miss on that run, and the Kings could not get anything going offensively. And it was the run, the type of run that you see from really good teams in the Celt- like the Celtics, who are just really elite on both ends of the floor and can lock in on both ends of the floor at the same time and make a huge run like that possible. Not much to say about the fourth quarter other than the Celtics kept going on a run, and then it was kind of over early in the fourth there. The Kings end their road trip 1-3 and and are now headed back to Sacramento to play Phoenix. A 1-3 and road trip, not ideal, but not necessarily unexpected after the seven-game winning streak. We obviously played tough teams, and it's tough to, to win on the road, which is why it was so important that we won a lot of those games at home and and a lot of the games against the weaker opposition because despite going 1-3 on the road trip, we're still 10-8, two games above 500 still. And obviously we play a tough team in in Phoenix, but they are missing Chris Paul, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder. So missing a lot of their guys. I mean, they've been missing Jay Crowder for a while. But um, obviously with Chris Paul being out, they're still a good team. They still have DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker, mostly Devin Booker, who I'm sure will be a problem for the Kings. But it, it's going to be nice to be back at home and not have to deal with 
both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum anymore, along with all their role players. You know, I think Boston's a lot better team than Phoenix, even if Phoenix is still a, a, a top Western Conference team. I, I definitely think that we have a lot better chance in that game than we did against the Celtics. I Because we stayed with the Celtics, we stayed competitive with them throughout a lot of this game. And I think if we play like we did in this game, I, I I don't think that this was a loss where it was the Kings playing terribly. I think it was just the Celtics are that good of a team. I mean, they're 15 and four. And I think if we play like we did in this game, most of the time against other teams, we're going to win or at least be in the games competitively. So I don't think that this was us taking a step back from, you know, how we were playing on the seven game win streak. I think it's just you're seeing us play against a, t- a team of a caliber that we haven't played yet. Hopefully the Kings can take advantage of a, of a depleted Suns team and keep taking care of business at home because we are six and three at home, which is really good so far and four and five away from home. And I think that's pretty much how we want it to be playing around 500 on the road and above 500 um, at home. I think that's the sign of of a good team and exactly what we need to do to be able to make the playoffs this season. Anyways, that is it for this episode. It is definitely a a shorter episode, but uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and leave a rating or review if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast. And I will see you to recap the game against Phoenix. Peace.